We are learning more tonight about a man rescue crews say died after falling near a waterfall in Wolf County. He had been reporting missing days earlier. It's been frustrating to many drivers this week what state road crews are saying about some changes made along Leestown Road in Lexington. A school bus driver shortage is causing delays. I'll talk to officials in Franklin County about how they're trying to adapt. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 6. Good evening. A tragic end of the search for a missing northern Kentucky man. Family members say that search crews found him dead near a waterfall in Wolf County. Investigators think 50-year-old George Neese likely fell to his death. Family members say he disappeared last Wednesday and was last seen walking not far from where his body was found. Sam Smith is tracking the investigation in our top story at 6. 50-year-old George Neese was missing in Wolf County. He was last seen on Wednesday. Yesterday, the search forum was focused on this wooded area near where he was staying. He was found quickly, but it wasn't the outcome his family and first responders were hoping for. You know, within 20 minutes, we had a, you know, a notification that they had located the subject. Behind me is a path that provides access to this wooded area. It runs down and back in this direction towards a waterfall. I'm told that's where he was found. Um, you know, he'd actually fallen from a 40 foot or 45 foot uh, waterfall. I talked to Nisa's fiance. She says they're from northern Kentucky and they were only in the area because his nephew was killed in a crash. They were here working on his nephew's funeral arrangements. You know, my guess is he came through, you know, maybe got a little too close to the edge. Uh, we've done several waterfall rescues in the past. They're typically slick around the edge and, you know, perhaps it was dark and he just got a little too close. Nisa's funeral arrangements are pending. His family says they'll likely need help covering the costs once the arrangements are set. In Wolf County, Sam Smith, WKYT. People living nearby say the area is often used by people looking to take a shortcut between a subdivision and the mountain parkway. Tonight, a Madison County teacher has been arrested. Police say she had sexual contact with a 16-year-old student. Bria police arrested 24-year-old Brandy Whitaker this afternoon and charged her with sexual abuse, rape, and sodomy. She's a biology teacher at Madison Southern High School. Police say she had sexual contact with a student twice over the summer, but it was not on school property. In a statement, Madison County school leaders say Whitaker has been suspended with pay pending the outcome of the investigation. Tonight's rush hour has turned into quite a mess along parts of Manowar Boulevard in Lexington. Lexington firefighters say a vehicle leaked hydraulic fluid between Polo Club Boulevard and Maple Leaf Drive. Firefighters and police are still trying to clean up the spill tonight. They say a crane leaked the fluid onto the road. And new tonight, it appears a teenager charged in connection to a shooting death in a Lexington park will be pleading guilty. 17-year-old Damian Sanders is scheduled to be in court tomorrow for a change of plea hearing. He's charged with manslaughter as an adult for the death of 21-year-old Antonio Franklin. Lexington police say Franklin was shot in Duncan Park in April of 2014. They say he was an innocent bystander caught in the crossfire of a gun battle between two groups. Three other people also face charges in this case. We could learn more tomorrow about the case against a former Kentucky woman accused of abusing her disabled adopted sister in Michigan. Candy Lawson is scheduled to be in court in Michigan for a pretrial hearing. Police say they found her sister starving and locked in a closet earlier this month. Lawson is charged with abuse of a vulnerable adult and embezzlement. Kentucky State Police have also reopened the investigation into the 2009 death of Lawson's adopted brother in Franklin County. The coroner says that 33-year-old Christopher Churchill weighed only 60 pounds at the time of his death. New tonight, Georgetown police are looking for a man wanted in connection to some thefts at a business. Bevins Motor Company gave a surveillance video showing a man stealing a commercial lawnmower from the business Sunday night. Managers say another lawnmower was also stolen that same night. They say each lawnmower is worth about $10,000. They're making some changes to keep this from happening again. We do plan on adding several more cameras um, and also beefing up a little more security with the Georgetown, Georgetown police uh, crews in the area every once in a while. 
The business also plans to install cables around the lawnmowers to keep them from being stolen. Tonight, Lexington police think speed and alcohol played roles in a crash that killed a man. Investigators say 43-year-old Lazarus Givens lost control of his SUV on West Maxwell Street near High Street early this morning. They say the SUV hit a telephone pole and a concrete wall. Police say Givens later died at UK Hospital. A party at a home near the University of Kentucky campus got out of hand. Lexington police say someone fired gunshots. Police say the trouble started after a group of people were asked to leave the party at a home on Crescent Avenue. They say a man in the group then grabbed a wood railing from a porch and beat someone with it. Then police say the group fired at least three shots. Witnesses say the party was going well until this group of people showed up. It was like all good vibes and then like there was like a ton of people here like as you know and it just got really chaotic and out of hand like very quick. UK issued a safety alert and after the shots were fired but later canceled it. Lexington police have not made any arrests. They say they have a vague description of the suspects. If you have driven along Lexington's Leestown Road the last few days, there's a good chance that you probably got stuck in traffic. Yesterday, construction crews turned on a new traffic signal on Leestown at Citation Boulevard, and they closed part of Alexandria Drive as part of the Leestown widening project. Officer Don flew over Leestown Road this afternoon in Sky First, and you can see some of the ongoing construction work going on in that area. Now, crews spent much of the day timing the new light at Leestown and Citation to match the timing of other lights in that area. They hope that will improve the flow of traffic in the area and get rid of some of the backups. But they say Alexandria Drive will be closed near Leestown for the rest of the week. Well, that's an artery, of course, that's heavily traveled, and at times we do have to close heavily traveled areas so that construction can be completed, and we always try to make that as temporary as possible. State road crews expect to reopen Alexandria Drive on Monday. They say it had to be closed to complete the tie-in of Citation and Alexandria. Crews are also widening New Circle Road in that area. They say three lanes of the outer loop of New Circle between Leestown and Versailles Road will be open by September 30th, just in time for the Breeders' Cup. They say the Leestown project should be finished in December. It is the coolest air we've had in months. A fall-like pattern continues across the bluegrass tonight. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey joins us with an early look at the forecast. Yeah, absolutely phenomenal to get these kinds of temperatures in the month of August with sunshine. We've had a lot of partly sunny skies on and off through the day. Normally when you get low 70s for highs this time of year, it's because it's raining. Well, it's not raining out there. Live look uh, toward the northern skyline. Some sun, some clouds, and everything's still very green out there from all the rains of the summer. And those temperatures, low 70s. How about Maysville? 69 degrees as of now. Some areas of northern Kentucky were struggling to get out of the upper 60s for the better part of the afternoon. Strong northwesterly wind flow around here with a big area of low pressure across southern parts of Canada, high pressure to our west. We're kind of uh, smack dab in between those two, and that means a lot of that cool air with a big chilly uh, air mass sitting across parts of the Great Lakes as of now. What are we talking about as we roll ahead? Well, the fall fill is going to continue for several more days, about as good as it can possibly get this time of year. But as we get ready now to switch the calendar from August into September and heading closer to the, uh, toward that Labor Day holiday, I do see some changes, guys, that may kick in before the weekend is over. We'll run down what those changes mean when I come back in 10 minutes. Less than two weeks into a new school year, Franklin County school leaders tell us they're dealing with a growing problem. They say the district doesn't have enough school bus drivers, and that's causing delays in getting some students home from school. New at 6, Sean Moody talks to school leaders about the problem and what they're doing to try and fix it. The assistant superintendent here in Franklin County said some of these buses are running as late as a half hour. They have plenty of buses. That's not the problem. He says they need more drivers here up front. They're just sitting there right now waiting to, waiting to fill them with drivers. There should be 100 school buses running throughout Franklin County this year. Instead, there are 87. Drivers on several of the routes have to add stops that would normally be part of another driver's route. That's led to some big delays. It's frustrating for a parent when you're, you're 
a child's getting home 30 minutes later than they did last year. Or... Assistant Superintendent Charlie Preston says the district is having trouble recruiting drivers. That's been a problem at school districts across the country. He says the low hours and big responsibility drives a lot of people away. Honestly, you see that on the on TV and stuff a lot of times where accidents have happened, kids have gotten hurt, and that that kind of has driven uh, the applicant pool down some. They're getting more aggressive with their recruiting. This bus was parked in front of the school board Tuesday afternoon. Advertising for drivers out front here. We do it at Walmart. We've had radio ads. I believe we've had ads in the newspaper. They're also trying to make the job more attractive. Combined um, jobs to where if you get hired as a bus driver, we find two and a half hours worth of work also as a custodian or a food service worker to try to get it up to eight hours. To Preston's get. hoping those efforts translate to more efficient ride times for students and parents. And Mr. Preston told me they expect six new drivers to be qualified soon, but they're still accepting applications for the other seven spots. In Franklin County, Sean Moody, WKYT. Preston said driver numbers have been falling for a few years, but it has been especially difficult this year. Some frightening moments for an elderly Lexington woman today. A fire broke out in her home. It happened this afternoon at a mobile home on Sundown Drive near the Fayette Scott County line. Both Lexington and Scott County firefighters responded. The 93 year old woman who lives at the home said her home quickly filled with smoke. What part is on fire? Because I know I hadn't. I hadn't been, I've been back there doing the abortion, but I come out, the boy, I come back to the kitchen, everything was full of smoke. And she was able to get out safely and was not hurt. Firefighters say they kept the fire from causing too much damage to the home. They're still investigating what caused the fire, but they think it started around a cardboard box. The latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. Today, a Frankfurt restaurant has been helping a teenager now in the fight of his life. As we first told you last week, 16 year old Bradley Kamick was diagnosed with encephalitis and is now being treated at UK Hospital. He's a student and soccer player at Frankfurt High School. Casa Fiesta Restaurant on Louisville Road in Frankfurt is donating 25% of its sales today to help pay for Bradley's medical costs. If they don't come together, we could lose, lose Bradley. He's just, he's just really sick, and his mom is heartbroken, and we just need to pull together this time. The fundraiser continues for the rest of the night. There's also a GoFundMe page that's been set up for Bradley. You'll find a link to it at WKYT.com. New tonight, some relief could be coming at the gas pump in the form of lower prices. BP says it's restarted part of a large oil refinery in Indiana that the company unexpectedly shut down earlier this month. BP blamed unscheduled repair work for the shutdown. And that led to much higher gas prices in a lot of the Midwest, including right here in Kentucky. Experts say that gas prices in the impacted areas could fall as much as 50 cents during the next two weeks, as long as no new problems develop. You can find the lowest gas prices where you live by going to WKYT.com.